Okay, a look at documenting literature reviews, which is something you, you certainly need for, for your final year project reports and maybe other other reports as well, any, any literature reviews. Um, I would expect my students to do this for project reports. If you've got another supervisor, you should talk to them about what they want. Uh, it's a good link to an article in Nature. It's linked through the image or through the notes of the presentation. Uh, it's aimed at larger scale reviews for publication, but does make some good points about review and literature in general. And also see the other articles linked from this page. There's lots of good stuff in this section of Nature. Uh, this is my absolute top tip for writing reports of any kind. Use the reference manager. Mendeley is a reference citation and bibli uh, bibliography manager. It's free and is a great time saver. Reference managers are important professional tools and will help you in your own work and collaborative projects. Mendeley is part of Teesside University's Future Facing Learning Toolkit. Um, there are a number of versions, including a web based application, one for the iPad, a PC, desktop, and laptop version. Uh, MySway and Mendeley is linked here. It's updated reasonably often, uh, usually if I had a new technique video, and there's links to lots of other basic guides to how to use Mendeley. So I can't recommend this too highly. Uh, okay, we're going to skip back to the video process now. It's important for you to first record the base in which you do your review, uh, which means recording databases, search terms, and possibly inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, as part of your documentation, you should record which databases you use. And later on, at the end of the video, I'll add a little section looking at a couple of the more likely ones which you'll use. And also the date in which you make any searches. Uh, more on dates in a moment. You probably have a good idea about the initial search terms. When you found some, in, uh, some interesting papers, have a look at the keywords. These can be useful in developing your own search terms. Uh, we'll document this process in your write-up. Uh, it should be done visually in a way like this. We can look at other tools for doing it later on, but it, it's recording the number of articles you look at and which ones you decide aren't relevant for various reasons and which ones you eventually include in your study. Um, you may want to consider inclusion exclusion criteria. These are the characteristics which make a study eligible or in ineligible included in your review. Uh, data is a common criteria, and in many cases, only probably go back five years from the current date, unless it's something a really important paper. This example will include search terms. It may be better to document these sec separately, and we'll see some examples later on. A summary of the process. As noticed earlier, a reference manager will greatly facilitate this process. So look at your databases, think about your search terms, think about inclusion exclusion criteria, date your process, and document the overall search. Okay, so visual documentation. Obviously, you can write this up in a textual form, and you may want to do that. But a picture is worth a thousand words, as I, I keep saying almost continuously. Uh, there are always a number of ways you can do this. I use XMind for a lot of stuff. XMind is a free tool for mind mapping, and it can be used for documenting searches. It's linked to from uh, this image. Uh, and there's also a video walkthrough I've done of the overall process. Uh, note the overall structure here again, total records found, those which fail the criteria, those who met the criteria, and those which were actually used in the study. Uh, back to inclusion and exclusion criteria, this time as a separate table, which is probably the best approach. Obviously, some of the criteria here will depend on your particular type of study. Uh, this is so. This is a possible example of documenting your search projects. As I mentioned, I'll expect my project students to use this approach. Students with other supervisors should ask them about this. Um, so we've got a, a documentation what databases use, what search terms, and when searched, then visual representation of the search and reminded to use this for each database used. So you can possibly combine the information together. That's really up to you. Uh, you may, as well as your written report, you may also want to include search details in a poster if your requirement assessment requires one. This is a generally nicely designed uh, poster design with the search, includes, search information included, the image could arguably be a little bit smaller here. Uh, search is an important part, but it's not the, it's not the, you know, the nuts and bolts of your literature review. Uh, for more advanced searches, there is Prisma, uh, the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. Prisma is a 27-item checklist used to improve transparency in systematic reviews. 
this is something to think about for the future perhaps uh, perhaps after you've graduated uh, bear in mind you may be doing more detailed searches uh, in teams so prisma may be something to have a look at okay that's all i want to say about that but i'm now going to open up a couple of databases and we'll have a look at search terms and how we approach them Okay, we're in the place I guess most students will probably start searching, which is Discovery from the library. It's not the only one. Uh, I've clicked up, up on there, it's brought up a bunch of my recent searches. So we'll make a little start here. We'll start by looking at hydroponic. And when we search for that, it comes up with um, how many runs? 78,000 results. Um, so I want to narrow that down a little bit. I want to have a look at salt, tall, irons varieties. Uh, so 78,000, I've added a search term, we note the and, which I'm, I'm not sure is strictly necessary in discovery, but I always do it as, because it's good practice. Uh, so it's now reduced that down to 1,800. Now there's a number of other things we can look here, I'm just really wanting to just look at research articles. So we'll click on research articles. Uh, it's just include research articles down to, down to 1,600 and I want it within the last five years. Okay, so now we've got that one 676. Um, you can obviously add other search terms then to narrow it down further. But that is our search term for now. Now you'd make, you'd make a note of that. You'd make a note of the other criteria. We're just looking at journal articles, so excluding all the other things. We're just doing stuff in the last five years. Um, maybe we want to also look at full text online. We, we have availability for that. Okay, so that's one approach. Now, there is a bit more to, there are more search engines available. Uh, in the library, if you go to databases, which we've opened up over here. Okay, so Science Direct is a useful database. Uh, so we'll have a look inside it. It, it gives you a general search here. They always, often prefer to go to advanced searches. Uh, there's a list of my recent searches down here, but we'll, we'll start one again. So we're looking at yogurt. Uh, searches, and it comes up with 35,000 results. Uh, so I'm going to add probiotic. Uh, and it's reduced now to 7,000. Now I'm going to refine further by adding prebiotic. Prebiotic, if I can spell prebiotic. Uh, click on search, and it's got it down to a couple of thousand. Now, again, we can look at uh, where we want to search back to. So there's three results from next year, which is, which is interesting. Uh, we'll just search basically the past three years, which takes it down to 672. Uh, we just want to review articles, takes it down to 200. So things are becoming much more manageable here. Uh, and again, this is the search term here. Um, right, okay, so just a couple of examples. Hope they were useful.